Hey drummers, Gary Williams is back with another reaction and analysis video. Please like, share, subscribe. If you're interested in lessons, drum set classes, or a cool drum set Facebook group, all that info is in the text box below. In today's video, we're going to be checking out Hub Johnson. Let's see what this guy sounds like. I've only heard a little bit of it. So far, so cool. Here we go. Nope. This one is what we want right there. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh yeah, blop it down, blop it down. Flat back sense bass. Okay, now that's <laughs> that's cool. Definitely into the showman, entertainer. It's going to keep his hands up in the air. Probably some Gene Krupa influence. Certainly a little bit of Buddy in there. Who could not? And just great stuff. So that's da -da 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 -da. just basically double stroke rolls played very, very high, making it look like he's almost picking the sticks up rather than stroking the drum down. So pretty cool effect there. Already some really great stuff. Fantastic left-handed traditional grip player, right? Interesting setup, extra cymbals, toms there from a traditional jazz drummer. Very nice. Uh, love some of that. <laughs> Single strokes around the drum. He, he's keeping that hi-hat on two and four, still maintaining the form. This is a 12-bar blues, but he's playing more in four-bar phrases, as I can tell. Kind of hard to hear where his downbeats are sometimes, because that 12 bar head that went twice after there was like a four bar intro then I don't know if that was a one when the horns did that so anyways I'm always trying to maintain the form when I listen to a drummer solo especially in a jazz context because it's very traditional for the drummer to solo over the song's form unlike rock solos which are kind of drum cadences extended solos similar to like a West Side Story or Channel One Suite, Buddy Rich Big Band, where the solo just goes off. There's no sense of time, and then the band's going to be brought back in. We're yet to see if that happens here. Probably will, I'm guessing. But some really great handwork. Um, fantastic. He was doing that. Three up, one down. Three hand hits, one down kick. Uh, some really nice stuff. Just fast, clean. Some, I think I heard some 11s in there. Anyways, uh, accents were coming around the same hand instead of alternating. So that's a, one of those types of rudiments. But anyways, let's carry on. Here's some more cool stuff. Yeah, that's like a, a right, left, left, right, left, left. Nice buzz. Suspends the time here. <laughs> ah, so left, left, right. Ah, yeah, those are almost like flam fours. Ooh, fast doubles, clean around the cymbals. Ah, left, left, right again. There we go, same thing. It's definitely Louis Belson, Buddy Rich kind of stuff. I love that. <laughs> oh, quit it. Yeah, I love that. Oh, wow. 
Whoa! Pop, 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 left hand combo and take. Two up, one down. I love that. Singles. Unison. Oh. Single drag taps. Single. Very fast singles. Love the hands in the sky. Definitely. Showman, showman. Yeah, there we go again. Left, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Some flam accents, some triplets. That's so cool. Ba 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 da 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 da. Three up, one down. Look at that. That's so cool. It sticks in the sky like that. <laughs> That's so buddy. Oh, back sticking. Very cool. Now, if you look at the traditional grip, he's got it between the index finger and the middle finger, a la Stuart Copeland style. Oh, here we go. Base, left, left. Okay, hands. Right, left, left, right, left, left. There we go again. The other version. Like triplets with the buzzing. Nice. Good old ball. Boom, 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 boom. Four on the floor. This is really cool. Nice. Great rim shot use. Love that. Ba da 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 boom, 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 boom. Special singles. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! This is like fast paradiddles and double strokes. Great hands. There's that look. No, I have fun. <laughs> there we go again. Oh! Swiss Army triplets. Take it, take it, take it. Those are great Swiss triplets. Just a lot of double singles, left, right, right, really fast. I think might be bringing band back and symbols. Here we go again. There's a line almost like hair drills there. Doubles, really fast doubles. Way in the sky. Yeah! Yeah! Fantastic! Very exciting! Okay, here we go. Head. So repeat that intro again. Six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, nine. Like you do. A double in. Love it. Cool, cool, cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Clap more. <laughs> oh, this guy's hysterical.
Outstanding. Yeah, those were definitely crazy sticks. Hub dancing. My glasses are fogging up. I loved it so much. All right. Wow. That was just super cool. Whoa. Love that guy. So many cool things that were going on. Definitely from the tradition of the Big Band era. Jazz-oriented stuff. A lot of Buddy. Definitely some Louis influence in there. Certainly Gene Krupa in terms. One of the more showy kind of drummers I've seen in a long time. Really puts a lot, <laughs> a lot of this stuff up in the sky like this. It's really fun to watch. And I really liked when you can move back from the audience's perspective and they showed you just what a visual effect it had. I mean, he sits tall. This is common. Jazz drummers to sit above the drums and not so nestled inside the kit. A lot of this has to do with the nature of this style of music. You're playing on the ride cymbal more than you're playing on the hi-hat a lot of the time, at least backing the band. And so you want to play with the tip on top, so you don't want your cymbals to be too high or flat. They should be down, a little bit angled, if not somewhat angled more, so you can play and not risk striking the edge, because it's really cymbal-driven music. And you could see some of those great shots very up close with the hand. Nice to see a left-handed traditional grip player and see all the things. And I almost said the left foot, because I'm, I'm a righty and I think of the hi-hat, but the hi-hat foot, I should say that title of my first book. Anyways, cool how he's keeping that steady time, very traditional for a, dra a jazz drummer behind their soloist. So the form, the time is always being stated. It actually creates more interest rhythmically when there is that stable sense of timekeeping on another part of the kit, jazz, hi-hat. And then the other hands, in this case, and the foot would do polyrhythmic stuff, lots of different stuff. So great hands, man, superior hands, really just amazing. Play very clean ideas, a lot of call and response ideas, a lot of repetition, very musical phrasing, some nice use of dynamics. And he used a lot of the same kind of themes, but the audience loved it, especially at toward the end. <laughs> I really liked the very end when he kept, boo, <laughs> more applause, boo. It's kind of fun, that interaction with the audience, which is a common theme in jazz performances is Especially with singers, they often tell a little story about each song they sing, so you kind of understand a bit more what went behind the text and the feeling since there is vocals and text. Here it's instrumental, so a lot of repetition. It's just really fun to watch this guy play. Really, really enjoyed him. It'd be one of those videos to really slow down, analyze, and then really break apart what he's doing. I really understood a lot of the essence of what he's doing. Of course, it's my first time, so you know it's a call-by-call -call action play here. So if I went back to really analyze this and, and figure these things out, which I do often for students, then I can do that for you. So if you're interested in any help learning how to play some of this stuff, contact me. Again, my information for lessons is in the text box below. Until then, I'll have a great day, and I'll see you on the next reaction and analysis video. Take care, and bye-bye.